So today we finished up our plumbing, mainly on um, our hookup to our shower. The, the only thing we really had to relearn was the less 90s you use, um, the higher the water pressure, because each 90, I think Corey said each 90 adds, is the same as 20 feet of pipe is how far the pressure drops off. So we originally had like three or four and he taught us that it's okay if you just bend the pecs and make like big loops because that actually adds to your water pressure. So that was an interesting thing we learned. Yeah, we relearned a little bit about pecs. We also learned some things we haven't done before, including how to install a shower valve and how that connects to your actual shower head. I wish we knew not to use as many 90s or um, no 90s at all because there was a lot of like tearing out and redoing to learn. Um, the proper way to run it for the other houses, but we do have it down. It should be pretty simple. We learned better ways to run PEX and plumbing. Um, not really a mistake, but one thing that I learned from Corey is when you're drilling holes through your two by fours for your PEX to run through, you can cut up at an angle um, instead of just always straight through. If you need to run your pipe, it's more natural it's going to make put less stress on your pecs then you can uh, cut up at an angle or down at an angle or sideways at an angle like however you need to do mm -hmm. um when you put your insulators like the little butterfly insulators on um you can run your pecs all the way through your holes without putting those on because they can stretch over and that's something i didn't know before so it's not a, you don't have to constantly feed it and put a clip on and keep feeding you can actually do it after you can open your clamp up and throw it in after so. um yeah and dry fit everything before you start crimping stuff down that's going to help with your workflow because if you make any mistakes um, it's going to be a lot easier to take it apart before you have everything crimped down so just dry fit everything first make sure everything is as it should be before you start uh, tightening things down so today we're going to need our drill and three quarter spade bit this is to pre-drill our holes for our pecs, if you haven't already. Next, we're gonna need our screwdriver with the flat head and Teflon tape. This will come later in the day when you're getting ready to um, tape on your pex adapters to your shower valve. We're gonna need our pex cutters to cut the pecs, um, our crimps to crimp down our crimp rings, a pair of pliers if you wanna give the, um, the crimp rings a light squeeze to hold them in place. Then we're gonna need our impact and Phillips head to screw in our insulating rings um, in our studs for the holes we drill. And then you're gonna need our, a tape measure to measure um, height and centers when you put on our shower valve. Hi, so today we are reworking our plumbing. Dan was kind of messing with it yesterday and we decided the way that we had it set it up was not good So, uh, because the way it was had too many fittings, too many 90 degree turns, which reduces your water pressure. So we're taking it out. We're gonna rework um, how it's all gonna go in there so that we have better water pressure um, for our shower and everything. So yesterday we started our plumbing for our washer and dryer and shower. So just a quick review, we have our inlet coming up feeding both our sink and toilet and it's also going to tie into our washer dryer and shower so we're teeing off this is feeding up to our washer and dryer um, we have our abs p trap and our vent through roof to prevent the vacuum so that'll just give air to prevent the suction and then um feeding into our shower we have half inch pecs hot and cold and what we're going to do is we're going to loop it around here and try to connect it to this valve without using any 90s because every 90 you use is going to restrict our psi so we're looping this around straight we had to drill through our stud and when we come here we're going to use pipe clamps to this this stud and we're taking it straight over and jasper's connecting our valve oh He's connecting our valve hookups right now. And this is a, um, a shower and tub valve. So that's why we just, right here we had to cap it because if you had a tub underneath, this would drop straight down 
to our faucet for our tub, but we don't have that, so that's why we put a cap on it. And from here, we're gonna have our hot come in on our right side, and our cold come in on our left side. And then we're gonna take a white PEX um, tube, and it's gonna come straight up through these holes up to that, um, up to that right there. And that's what our shower head is gonna tie into. So once you get here, it's pretty simple and it's just one piece of PEX that'll run up and over up there with it as little um, 90s as we can use so we don't restrict any water pressure from going to that shower head. So right now he's getting ready to connect our cold water line into our valve and from that valve we're going to stem off into our shower head which is going to be on the wall adjacent to that so what he's going to do is he had to grab some teflon tape and throw those adapt those pex adapters onto that valve so it looks like they're on right now so right now he's sizing up our pex he's going to cut it down we're going to throw a crimp ring on top of it slide it on that valve crimp it down and once that's secure we can go ahead and add our white line that'll that'll run straight to our shower head. Cool. And what what goes into uh, positioning the valve? Like, are there any rules or? Yeah. So, be... um, with our shower head right here, it's gonna run on this middle on the right of this middle stud, if you framed it right, and it's gonna be six feet ten inches up and eighteen inches to the center. So the center of this is going to be 6 feet 10 inches up and 18 inches from this stud. What about the valve? Anything special on the valve? The valve we're going to take, um, so it should be 34 inches across from here to um, our bywall wall. And we're going to take half of that and that's going to be the center of this. Or if it's not 34 inches, you're just going to take halfway measure half here measure half here and it's any if it's a different measurement you're just going to split the difference and that's your true middle and it's going to be what is it 42 inches high 46 inches high to the center and, and as you see jasper work here what is the trick is, is the trick uh for, for jasper to go nice and slow or just to kind of well what he's doing is it takes a while to throw your Teflon tape on to make sure you have a real good bite so no water leaks out. And what he did is he's going to go ahead and just fasten it with a few drywall screws as well as this. And this is our top plate, and that's going to cover um, all the behind the scenes. And with our top plate, he's holding a sheet of drywall up to it. It needs to stick out of our drywall about a quarter of an inch because the goal is when we tile it, our tile needs to be even with this black plate because we also have a finishing um, metal plate that'll go over our valve. So all this will be hidden and it'll be flush with our tiling after we put drywall and tile. So have a piece of drywall on hand, right, to measure? Yeah, at least a scrap. And what we found out is when we put this block in, um, Instead of being flush with the back, you need to move it up in about an eighth of an inch, and that'll be um, a good placement for your valve. Well, they can either get it through here and force it through here and notch this one. They can either notch this one, or they can notch this one to get the pipe inside this hole right here. What does notching mean? Uh, notch would cut this wood out in front of the hole and then we would put a nail plate over the surface of it so we don't get a nail into the pipe. A good way to make that turn is what we're trying to do. See I would feed it this way and then into there through these. Well we'll just have to try well just like this blue one remember? Yeah feed it that way yeah and then Or, or you do a bang plate here, either way, because you could do one here because you can pull that out far enough to get it to return back in.
I'll let you guys figure it out. You can get it done though, I know that. It might be better to have it out here for the plywood rather than a bump in your sheetrock. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna notch out this two by four right here so we can uh, slide in our pegs and have enough room to make this turn. We're great. Looks good. Well, we just had to notch this out to fit our, our pipe without throwing a 90 in. So now what we're going to do is just put a bang plate over it to protect this wire, this um, this PEX and ensure that when we're putting our wall sheathing on that we don't shoot a nail through that. No, so we don't lose any water pressure doing it this way. So it's a win-win. Well, we forgot to put our our insulators in that protect the pecs from getting cut. So basically what this does is it slides over our pecs and we're going to push it in the hole that we that we drilled just like that. And what this does is when you feed high pressure through this this pex, it'll start to vibrate. So this just insulates the pecs from the hard outside wood and make sure that over time that this wood doesn't start cutting into our pets. So right now I removed the, this uh, shower valve um, so that I can crimp this on because once it's up there and installed you don't have room to crimp it so making sure you get it all the way click it and making sure that uh, your pex is poking out a little bit on top you don't want to push this crimp ring all the way up so when you start crimping, a problem you're going to run into a lot is that your crimp ring isn't going to stay in place. It's just going to slide down. And to get a good seal, you need it to be about an eighth inch up. So what I do to keep it up is I'm going to take a pair of pliers and I'll hold it to where I want it. Then I'll just put a little pressure and now it's not going to slide down. So then I'll come with my crimpers and I'm going to make sure that the crimp ring is fully covered and it's even all the way around and then I can go ahead and crimp it down until I, until I hear a click. And that's how you know it's crimped all the way. And now that it's not going anywhere. So it's just important that your teeth hug the crimp ring evenly all the way around so you crimp it down evenly and there's an even amount of pressure creating a good seal because say you were to crimp it halfway, you're gonna put more pressure on one end of the pex than the other and eventually it might lead to a crack or a tear or even the, the pex just popping off. Today we actually finished up our shower connections uh, to our shower valve and then we ran our hot and our shower feed over to the shower head and uh, basically they finished off all of their connections on their uh, plumbing down here to their toilet they put some clamps in where they needed clamping uh, and then they were basically getting ready now to start figuring out how to run the dryer vent up through the roof. So we have a dryer vent that we have to get in here and we also have a junction box for these electrical circuits that'll be going in this wall right here. So I'm pretty sure our dryer vent's gonna go on this side. It's gotta go up through this plate and then up through the roof. They also tomorrow are gonna have to vent their exhaust fan out and up to uh, the roof that they're going to be putting on in the next day or so. Well, it worked out good. We had to get this pipe from the shower valve 
through this wall and then up to the shower head. So we notched the one wall right there and then put a, a nail plate over the top of it so we can't put a uh, screw or nail into our pipe. Overall, they've done a great job. Um, everything's looking really good. Tomorrow, they're going to start putting siding on the outside. We decided on this build not to side the outside until we had all our plumbing and electrical in. And we feel that it's making it a little easier for the students to uh, get the plumbing and electrical in. So tomorrow, they're going to start uh, wrapping the outside with uh, their siding. So we put a half inch OSD board on first and that'll be our wall sheeting. But overall, great day for those guys. They did really well.